In this video, we'll talk about how the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply got started and uh, its main components. Before we analyze the short run, let's recap some concepts from classical economics. In previous lectures, we built a model of production which outlined how output is produced from combining different factors of production. Capital, labor, natural resources, and human capital. Productivity, A, determine how much each country could do with the factors of production they used. We also learned that prices and nominal interest rates are functions of the money supply. The Federal Reserve manages the money supply through monetary policy. Lastly, we motivated the classical dichotomy, which explained that real quantities and output are separate from nominal values, res uh, re resulting in monetary neutrality. Much of the theory in this chapter, and the one that follows, originates in the work of Keynes. He wrote a very influential book called The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money in 1936. The book argued that there is a connection between prices, money, and real variables like consumption, investment, and employment. In the book, he also famously critiqued the long-run perspective for ignoring the short run. And I quote, the long run is a misleading guide to current affairs. In the long run, we're all dead. Economists set themselves too easy, too useless a task if in tempestuous seasons they can only tell us when the storm is long past, the ocean will be flat. One thing that Keynes didn't do was formalize his ideas. Many economists work for the next 30 years after his writing to formalize the thinking into a model. The model of aggregate demand and supply combines ideas from classical economists and Keynes to illustrate how an economy fluctuates around its long run growth path. So let's start with some classical ideas of the long run. Let's rename real GDP as the natural rate of output Yn. Like mentioned, the natural rate of output is a function of productivity and the factors of production. Notice, nowhere in the equation are prices. So when we graph the relationship between the natural rate of output and prices, we get a vertical line. This vertical line illustrates that no matter what P is, Yn doesn't change. This is a graphical representation of the classical dichotomy. Keynes' addition to our theory is the idea of aggregate demand. It formalizes the connection between output and its components and prices. As prices increase, short-run output, Y, decreases. We will represent short-run output from the perspective of an aggregate demand using our GDP expression for the expenditures approach. Lastly, we have the short-run aggregate supply. It shows the relationship between firms' behavior and short run output. Why? As prices increase, firms increase their output in the short run. One important idea is that of expectations. Importantly in the model, expectations about the price level, PE, will change a firm's behavior and move the economy in the short run. Together, aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply determine the short-run equilibrium in the economy. Over time, they and the long-run aggregate supply together determine the long-term path of output. In the next videos, we will highlight each component in the model in detail and explain how to use it to analyze macroeconomic events.